before we jump into this video, I have some sad news to announce. Patty O'Donnell, who had been my oldest living relative, has passed away. She died as a result of a recent heart attack that she just wasn't able to fully recover from. I did a wonderful video interview with her, talking about her life and family. When you have a moment, check it out if you want to see a delightful lady with stories to share. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Today, we're stocking the freezer. I'm going to be driving to a local farm to pick up a quarter of a cow. It's an investment, but having local pasture-raised meat on hand will be nice. They happen to have half a hog available, so we got that too. This is kind of fun. I've asked permission to get some video of what we've got out here to look at. This is, uh, this is where our meat was raised. Family farm out here. Fair prices. someone else's operation. food security for us, and now we have this food security. The apples behind me are also food security. This variety happens to be Arkansas Black. Right now it's about the end of September, and the first few of these apples just getting ripe enough. I'm pretty excited to have the first few apples in our refrigerator already. <laughs> starting over in fall. You I don't know. Your hand I always flick my hand around. Touching your face. And... It's a hot night here. It's, it's not hot. It's nice out. It's like 90 degrees and the sun has just gone down. It is a beautiful evening. It's still a little bit warm though. It feels fine to me. Okay. What do you like about our freezer full of meat? Well, I like that we got it from people local to us who raised these animals here on their own land mm -hmm. and that they were butchered humanely and that they had nice lives and also that we have now a freezer full of meat so we don't have to worry about trekking an hour there and an hour back to grocery stores in larger cities to get, you know, good prices for things and stuff like that or, you know, we can get stuff at our grocery store here in Greenfield but 
I'm used to having a lot of stuff in my freezer and being able to kind of say, I just want to pull something out and stuff like that. It makes it really easy to meal plan that way. I can kind of just defrost what I need. So now I have a grocery store in the basement because we have so much food down there. So, and literally it makes the next probably nine months it's basically if we run out of staple type things like flour and sugar and coffee that we really need to go to the grocery store otherwise you know other than those things we can pretty much you know technically we could probably go a couple weeks without having to go to the grocery store so um is just it? in general i mean lately i've been probably going once a month to really get groceries but if we literally used up all our staple type foods like flour sugar and things like that we could we could still go a couple weeks without those things and make other things because of all the other food that's what i'm saying so is it more of a convenience for having our grocery store being down in the basement or is it also more of a, a quality issue of having really good quality meat well it's good quality i mean if you look at particularly if you're looking at like ground beef it's a noticeable difference i mean the ground beef from a cow that's been raised out on pasture and things like that is significantly different from the grocery store meat and i also think that that the quality of caliber of meat that they put into the ground beef when you get it from a normal butcher versus mass produced ground beef which is just has every little bit of the cow thrown in there and ground up is pretty big difference you know and also then i know this probably came from one cow yeah it got ground up and there's not like 50 cows in my ground beef there's not 50 porks in my ground pork so the thought that it anything would be contaminated is almost eliminated then because of that mm -hmm. so it, it's a lot more safe for of an option it's healthier mm -hmm. and I feel good about supporting local people and local families and things like that yeah. so so we've got quality we've got convenience and there's also conscience because mm -hmm. I know you care about how the animals lived before yes. they became our meat yeah yeah it's the next best thing to raising them ourselves so which we intend to do in some cases With pork probably not yep. probably with beef yeah we'll there's see. a lot of people who have cattle around here so it's really easily accessible to get e I, technically i could even just go down to our gas station down down the road and get ground beef that it was a local cow looks grass-fed the beef that i bought is good so i feel really good about doing that but this is a step beyond that and that it's you know a big portion of the cow all in our freezer it's a quarter of a cow so and you were happy that we also that i also picked up the pork yes very excited about okay. getting pork because one of Bacon. our favorite things is the pork mm. food products so you know we we eat a lot of ground pork and spaghetti and things like that and then we also like to have bacon with breakfast and with uh green beans and stuff like that so we can go through a lot of pork actually actually i looked at it and i was like maybe should i got a whole pork <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have a whole one so we yeah we, we got, got what, what we could, we could. Yeah. yeah yeah but It'll be a good experiment to see how we go through it because I've never had this much ground beef either. 
So we're kind of switching things a little bit for our diet in that usually if I went to the grocery store, I would tend to get more things that are chicken and pork and less beef. Um, we will be raising chicken for meat and putting that in our freezer, but that's a down the road thing yep, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm finding that, that I don't like grocery store chicken at all anymore. So I'd kind of rather have our own chickens. I just don't feel good about eating it because it's so easy to grow them out and butcher them. So, and I actually really prefer to have a whole roast chicken and then use pieces of it to make dinners because you can roast a chicken and then cut the carcass up after, you know, maybe if you're a larger family, you might roast two chickens, have what you want for dinner the first night of a nice roast chicken, makes a great Sunday dinner, and then a couple more days that week, you throw some of it chopped up into some tortillas with some rice and beans, or, or you could make a stew or soup out of it, or you could um, throw it into like a rice dish, maybe with some cheese or vegetables. You can do a bunch of stuff with that leftover chicken and it just makes a really good way to stretch that time that you spent cooking it out for a few more days and have variations on those leftovers. Because otherwise, if you get a chicken breast, then you're dealing with cooking the chicken and all that stuff and then maybe you get one or two meals out of it. Whereas for us, if I roast a chicken, we might eat a whole week off of that chicken. And that's a great savings of time and energy for me to have that whole week basically planned out as different chicken meals. <laughs> and Brian doesn't notice any difference. You know, he's like, oh, we're having tortillas it's tonight. Nice. Great. It's nice to have it mixed up a bit and not have <laughs> yep. the same thing every yep. night for a while. Yep. Yeah, because otherwise, if I really want to make a chicken meal, I feel like I need to make a big chicken meal to make it stretch out, and then we get kind of bored of it. So, that's kind of sidetracked from talking about beef and pork in the okay. freezer. I actually like that we went to a local farm to get this meat, because it's close enough that we didn't have to use coolers with ice packs. Our our Walmart is far enough away that it's it's not good to bring those kind of things home because they're they're not protected. Protected. Yeah. You can't get them in the freezer fast yeah. enough. So. Yeah, yeah. So if we, for example, one of the things out here because it is so hot in the summer, if we go to the Walmart and get frozen food. By the time we get it back to the house, it's already half defrosted. So, um, it's not the most convenient thing for buying produce in the summertime anyway. So, my strategy now is to think about what kinds of things do I need to get in the winter just to have some things that we maybe didn't weren't able to grow ourselves like I didn't get any peas this year because I did not have a garden in time to do enough. spring garden yeah. and I'm not planning to do a fall garden because there's just other projects that we need to focus on mm -hmm. so um and we also need to spend more time relaxing we've been spending way too much time just go 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 so we're trying to relax a little bit more for the fall shifting our plans but not canceling them I guess yeah yeah but anyways with groceries and things so that that means this winter I'm gonna plan to go buy you know maybe five or six bags of frozen peas in the winter time just so that we have peas to last us for a good long time because Brian will eat peas in everything if I put peas in everything so some of those staple things we'll just pick up one of the times when it's a nice cold day in the winter and haul it all home. So, yeah. What are you looking forward to cooking the most right now? If you could vote on something that you want to want to have soon. 
I don't know. I kind of like uh, simple things. So maybe like some tacos, ground beef, and just mm. something like that. Some simple fast thing was kind of what I was thinking. Take some of that ground beef and make tacos out of them and add some goat cheese and maybe some rice. We've got a lot of goat cheese in the fridge. Yep. I'm kind of rooting for something with pulled pork. <laughs> maybe smoked. Yeah. Brian yeah. really Brian only likes the things that take me like a whole day <laughs> to work on minimum. That's like a minimum bar for him is like if I want a really good meal now he's got it down to a science of knowing which things are like the excruciating things for me to produce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so his favorites are always the most time intensive, unfortunately. You can get you like a good simple ramen. <laughs> Ramen's good too. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip around the moon with us.